really are passionate about God, know Him. Before you start doing something, know Him first. When I was new in America, ah, ito na. <laughs> Long time ago. After the invasion of the Japanese in Hawaii, <laughs> na, when I was in America, I landed in the great state of California, I gave the tarmac a hug. No, I did not. I always wanted to go to America. When I came here, I was with my aunt for a while. So I decided I should visit my girlfriend in New York. So, what I did was, I uh, gathered all the money I had, $65. <laughs> uh, I don't think I need more than that. I'm 66 probably. So I went to buy a sweater for my wife because I heard that New York is cold. Those people, the, 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 so I went over to, to a place somewhere in uh, San Jose, California and bought, bought her a sweater. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> my wife is laughing. So I went to a um, boarded plane, came to New York, and I brought this thing, and I saw her and said, I have a present for you. Oh, what do you have? And her friend was next to her. She opened it and she said, oh, earth color. Earth color, she said. And I'm like, oh, man, she likes it. I don't know if she likes it. What, what is this? <laughs> Eventually, we got married, and she said, you know, this what you gave me? Sucks. <laughs> what? And then she told me, okay, listen, since we're getting married, rule number one, don't buy me anything I have to wear. <laughs> you know why? I thought, because I like the earth color, she, I thought she likes it. And so I bought, bought her the, the most earth color, you know, close to the earth. <laughs> like buying the dirt, put it on her. As it turned out, she said she doesn't like it. The same thing, we have ideas who God is, and probably God would like to do this. But God is saying, hey, before you start spending your money doing something and sweating for me, check me out first. What do I want? What do I want? Don't label it sincerity because you could be sincerely wrong. And I'm upset on what you're doing. Remember what Jesus said. There will come a day that people will kill for me. And they thought they were doing God some business. Can you believe that people will actually kill for God? You know, abortion is wrong. I know that. There was this guy who took a sniper rifle and shot the abortion doctor. He said, Jesus said so. You said, no, I, I told him not to do abortion, but I didn't tell you to go shoot people. So Jesus was called by Sabina to appear before the court. No, that's just kidding. People can extrapolate so far because they don't know who God is. God limited himself in the parameters of the word. Samuel said, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God loves obedience. Di bali na yung sacrifice mo, sumunod ka lang sa akin. Sumunod ka lang sa akin. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's why salvation is based on the knowledge. On the knowledge. The saving knowledge of God. Jude chapter 23, uh, chapter 1 verse 23, the Bible said this. Save others by snatching them out of fire to others show the mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. He is saying here, in another translation, rescue anyone who needed to be saved. Snatch them away from the fire. How is that? By praying for them. Because some people are actually in the fire, they don't know. They say, oh, I'm just having my time under the sun. No, sir, it's hell. They don't know. Like in Romans, uh, we, we just read that. Paul said, their zeal was not based in the knowledge of God. Akala mo lang yon, hindi yan ang kalooban ng Diyos. Salvation does not drop on our head. It comes as a knowledge. Somebody has to tell someone. And that someone was that person who told you about Jesus. That's why you're here. But you know, but before you were told about it, somebody else prayed for you so that you might be ready to receive the word. Amen. There's a lot of impediments in the sharing of the knowledge of God to leave the damnation or to leave us ignorance, ignorant. We can see interference like the demonic, demonic issue. Remember when Paul was sharing to Publius ito yung ano yung proconsul ng uh, Roman proconsul while he was sharing the gospel merong assistant si merong counselor si Publius 
His name was Elimas. His other name was Bar Jesus. You know what's the meaning of Bar in Hebrew is? Son of Jesus. Of course, he's not the son of Jesus. Every time na sinabi ni Pablo, you know Jesus saves, sabi niya, oh, that's not true. Uh, Jesus loves you. Says, no, he doesn't love you. He goes, he, lagi siyang nambabara. Every time he talks about how Jesus wants to save people, he's the person next to him who's saying, probably hitting him on the elbow, just, just causing distraction. Sometimes, the, okay, look at the person next to you. Is he bothering you? <laughs> that's Elimas. <laughs> if he's not bothering you, that's Jesus. If he's bothering you, it's bar Jesus. To the point where Paul said, you know what? You be quiet. You're going to be blind now. And he went blind. You know why Paul said, the Bible said, the devil is very interested in the word of God. You remember the part of the sower? When the sower was sowing the seeds, he did not stop the sower. But he stole the seed. Yung napunta sa pilapil, sa daanan, kinuha niya. What the Bible said, why did the bird come, which is symbolic of the devil? Why did he eat the, bird, the seed? So that they may not know and be saved. Amazing. Salvation is based on knowledge and the word of God. If you can prevent people from reading or hearing the word of God and understanding it, you kept them ignorant and they will be left, what? Damned. But salvation is preparing their hearts so that they may know what the word is. So nakakindili kaya po, wala pong kristyanong mangmang. You should know what you believe in because you heard it first. Hindi kristyano kasi yung nanay ko, kristyano eh. Ano ka? O kausapin ko ang nanay mo hindi kasi yung lola ko. Because you made a choice, you made a decision. Another impediment from knowing the truth is the element of tradition. And then lumaki akong ganito, ganito talaga ako. You know? Kinalaki ako na to, to panahon pa ni Mahoma, ganito na kami, kaya ganito na talaga kami. Patay na ho si Mahoma, ah, ganun, mamamatay na rin kami. Alam niyo ba kung sinong nag Alam niyo ba kung bakit napako si Jesus? Kasi sa tradition. Seriously. It was tradition that crucified Jesus. He came in the midst of 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 Israel. They were reading the Bible and yet next to the Bible was tradition. He was talking about the scripture, the pure scripture, but the people at that time has the scripture along with tradition. And when Jesus started talking about the tradition, they were offended. They wanted to keep their status quo. They wanted to keep where they are and they had him nailed. And a lot of us, even Christians now, are refusing to grow or we're not growing because we have these old traditions that we have kept. We have kept this. You know, knowledge, this is, I, I wrote something here. Knowing the word of God is actually, uh, repl- I don't want you to misinterpret this, replacement theology. This is not the, uh, the communist kind. Replacement theology is everybody, whether they know God or not, has a theology. Amen? Meron kang matrix of belief. Kahit hindi mo kilala si Jesus, meron kang theology, meaning a knowledge of a spirituality of a little bit. Malamang kamag-anak mo si Mang Kepweng, that's a theology. No, I believe there are spirits in the water or the spirits of mga live and everything. That's a theology. But malalaman mo kung tama ang paniniwala mo sa pamagitan ng buhay ng isang tao. When your theology is confronted by problem and it starts to falter, you know your theology is wrong. But a theology that's based on the scripture, when it's encountered by a problem, the problem will be overcome and people grow. So we, every believer who has known Jesus has portions of his theology being replaced. Every time you sit down in a Bible study or hear messages, you should be open to replace things. Pinapalit-palitan mo yan. Ay, dapat pala ako magpatawad. That's true. Patawad ka. Dapat pala ako lumago. Dapat pala ako magpagbigay. Dapat pala ako nagsisimba. Dapat pala ako umaawit uh, sa bahay. <laughs> Kasi nagpaparinig ako. Baka masama ako sa music eh. Theology. It has to be replaced every time. Don't sit there and try to challenge the word with your theology. The word should be the last Last say in your life, if the Bible said so, drop your theology. Remember what the Bible said? The wise man, having found the treasure, ano sabi niya, will take out everything from his house and replace it with the new. That is what, that is what about the saving knowledge of Jesus. Another impediment from knowing the Lord will be the, uh, the, the cares of the world, 
the money, the wealth, the, the health, the food, relationships, they are legitimate. But the problem is the enemy magnifies it so big that you cannot even see God. I, I, when I was in the Philippines one time, the pastor said, Brother Boo Boy, ano mas malaki, yung piso o yung buwan? Which is bigger? The one dollar coin or the moon? Yeah, of course the moon is bigger. He said, no. Because if you put that coin close to your eye, it's bigger than the moon. Right? And the devil, the devil is that he brings your problem closer to your face so you don't see anything else. But what? But the problem. There was a story in the Bible that said there was a party that God called. Hey, come on, I'm having a party. Call everybody. But they all have excuses. Oh, I just got married. I just bought a new oxen. I just, I just bought this. I, just, I had to try this. I had a new iPhone, whatever. And nobody showed up. Because they thought their issue is bigger than God. God is saying your issue is too small. You should be privileged. And so the devil actually magnifies that. That's why in our pushback, you would understand. We'll be looking at this and, and, and fighting this. Okay? Not, not fighting the problem. Fighting the revelation of the enemy making it bigger than they, they are. Now, I want us to, to look at this. Uh, let's go back to, to this scripture. Yung kanina. And, uh, you know, I always try to not break apart. To really study what the Bible is saying. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Now, if you would look at that, what are petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving? First of all, what are prayers, petitions, and, and, and intercession? Aren't they all prayers? Right? Why not just say, I want all prayers said to everybody? But he specifically said, no. When you pray, I want, I want you to be preparing using petitions. I want you to be interceding and put thanksgiving with that and prayer. Now, let me define this to you. In, in Greek, actually, of course we know what thanksgiving is. Thanksgiving is what? Not complaining. <laughs> oh, thank God, Lord Jesus, it's not a bigger problem. That's not it. If you complain, go to the city hall. Thanksgiving opens the gates of God. You can never approach the presence of God with a complaint. Because this is one, one thing I realized. Regardless of which place you are, and know this, this is the truth. You know why? Because I said so. <laughs> no, no, this is true. Wherever you are, whatever situation you are in right now, at this moment, or whatever condition you are at this season of your life, it's a reason to thank God. I don't even want to say, kasi, well, at least I have my hands, hindi putol yung tenga ko, hindi putol yung No, don't go there. You know, there's some people said, why don't you be thankful? At least you're not in the hospital. That, 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 that's a lame thanksgiving. The reason, I was praying one time, God, God showed me this. He said, I never drop the ball. Your situation right now, your, your condition right now, is the very thing and the very place I have placed you and it glorifies me. I, you did not miss the mark. Where you are now, whether you're suffering or having a good time, is the very place that I have placed you at this moment. I am not wrong. I am right in placing you here because I am glorified. You may not be enjoying it, but I am glorified. You may not be having a good time, but this is by my wisdom the place you should be at this moment. And if I am at the correct place at this moment, whether it's a wonderful place or not, I should be thanking God. Amen? Some people change their situation, they start using drugs. That you cannot say, thank you Lord for the drugs, makes me feel good. <laughs> Wrong. Because you want to escape it. And then I re that's when I started saying, thank you Jesus. I am not in the wrong place. You actually brought me here. This is strife I'm having. I did not bring it to myself. I was talking to, uh, take a revelation from this. I, I hope you would understand. My coworkers approach, a coworker approached me and said, Robert, can you pray for me? So I prayed for her, and then four others came in, so it became a prayer meeting. But then when we were, toge when we were together, she said, why am I suffering this problem now? And I said, you know why? You're taking this problem now? Because you're a believer. 
the Lord has given you the grace to stand up against this issue, 